Hello and welcome to Bristol Sport TV from Ashton Gates Sports Bar. Well, this week we have a real international flavour to the programme as we report on sporting success from across the globe. And we'll start with rugby as the Six Nations tournament is well underway. Bristol Rugby are playing their part as Matthew Morgan is part of the squad for Wales, while the ladies have no fewer than seven representing their countries in the tournament. Well, Sarah Hunter led out England for their second win of the tournament as they beat Italy 30. 23-24. Hunter was joined by Bristol teammates Izzy Noel-Smith, Amber Reid and try-scoring Katie Mason. Meanwhile, Wales, they beat Scotland for their first win of the competition, racking up a 23-10 victory with Eleanor Snowsell and Bethan Dainton both in action. Finally, though, it was a disappointing weekend for Bristol's Claire Malloy with Ireland. A real blow to them retaining their Six Nations title after a shock 18-6 defeat to France. Well, staying with international rugby, Bristol Rugby's head of communications, Tom Tainton, is spending some time down in New Zealand with the super rugby team, the Hurricanes. Earlier, he caught up with World Cup winner Bowden Barrett and began by asking him what it was like to score the winning try in a World Cup final. Oh, mate, I just, uh, I hope, I, I let him know that I was around, but um, I didn't think that he was going to kick it. I was hoping to get into a position to catch a pass, but... Uh, as soon as I saw him tower to head, I was just I wasn't holding back, and fortunately for me, it was a, a, a forward, so he was a little bit tired. How did you find the the tournament itself in England? I mean, it must have been a pretty cool place to travel around, and you've obviously been there many times now. But they really embraced rugby there, didn't they? Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, it was such a huge city. Um, you wouldn't really know that the World Cup's on in the, in, the, in London Central, but certainly around the stadiums, the fan zones. Um, and at the games, the atmosphere was amazing, so it was really well done. And we got to see a lot of the countryside. I was staying on the skirts of London, so yeah, it was good to move around. And what advice would you give to any young guys who are expir aspiring to get into the professional game? I guess just find a purpose as to why you why you want to play rugby, and um, you know you need a, a purpose. You want to be enjoying yourself. Um, you want to be playing playing with your mates and. Um, just train really hard. Like I just remember when I first started, I played to enjoy it, and um, because I enjoyed it. So yeah, if you if you're doing that, then uh, everything that happens is a bonus, and um, it can lead to an exciting career if you're good enough. And if you're not, then that's cool because there's a lot of good times along the way, and you meet a lot of good people. So. Well, Bristol certainly enjoyed their performance at Ashton Gate last Friday against Ealing Trailfinders as they racked up nine tries against them and moved 10 points clear at the top of the table. Certainly this show of individual brilliance from Welsh international Matthew Morgan should inspire any of the youngsters watching of how to play the game. And just a reminder, tickets on sale for their next home game. It's against the Cornish Pirates and that's on Sunday, March the 6th, kickoff at three o'clock. Well, it certainly seems like New Zealand is the place to be at the moment as Lando Norris wrote himself once more into the history books at the weekend as he won the New Zealand Toyota Racing Series. The 16-year-old Somerset driver claimed the series with a race to spare, becoming the first Briton since Sir Jackie Stewart back in 1967 to win the Grand Prix and season finale along the way. Well, Lando will compete in the Formula Renault series this season and hopefully we'll catch up with him once he's back from New Zealand. Well, speaking of new seasons, Bristol City women made a fantastic start to their season after a 7-1 thrashing of QPR in the third round FA Cup against them on Sunday. Millie Farrow opened the scoring on her debut immediately from kickoff. QPR's Natalie Richardson pulled them back on level terms just a minute later before Corinne Yorston fired City back into the lead. And from that moment on it was goals galore as they netted another five goals which saw them safely through to the fourth round when they'll take on local rivals Yeovil. And tickets are available for that match on the website. It's Sunday the 28th of February with a two o'clock kickoff at the Stoke Gifford Stadium. Well, new Bristol City head coach Lee Johnson got off to a winning start on Saturday at Ashton Gate as they had an impressive 2-1 win over Ipswich. Now they travel to MK Dons on Saturday for another six-pointer and Lee Johnson says he's looking forward to the test. They slightly tweaked their style and uh, they've become a lot more solid in their 
sort of the way they defend and they've got a good position of strength in which they uh, they break off so it'll be an interesting game and uh, I think last year obviously Bristol City always had good results against MK Dons and, and it was two teams that obviously got promoted at times they found it tough this year but now they're finding their feet just like us. I don't think it'll be as open maybe as people think because I think the way sort of uh, both styles are but we'll certainly be going to win the game and um, and it'll be good it'll be a good game because there's quality players on the pitch and I think the way that uh, the individuals are sort of set up there's going to be uh, a lot of attacking play and a lot of um, good dribbles in wide area from wide areas from both teams and some good football as well well, City are back in action at Ashton Gate on Tuesday night for their game against Brighton and Hove Albion. There are just a limited number of tickets on general sale, so head to the website. And reminder, six of the last seven league games at Ashton Gate have all sold out. Well, to basketball now, and the Flyers welcomed back American guard Cardell McFarland, who notched up a game high of 21 points last week as they took on second place Leicester Riders. And I'm pleased to say that Flyers captain Greg Street joins me. And it was an impressive team performance, wasn't it, against what is a difficult team? Yeah, we knew that these last couple of weeks were going to be tough. Playing first and second place was always going to be daunting for us, especially with the injuries that we've had. But we had a really good performance. We had a great start. We were solid defensively. And I think we got what we needed from the game. Mm. Well, you say an impressive start, a solid start. You, you were leading in the first quarter and really sort of stunned the riders. Yeah, definitely. I think we took them out of their rhythm real early in the game. Um, defensively, we were in the passing lanes. We were making their offense look quite difficult for them. And I think that's something that they thrive on. Uh, their press wasn't seeming to bother us at all. We were managing to break it. And I think that rattled them so it definitely helped gain momentum for us throughout the game. We mentioned it, it's been a tough couple of weeks because uh, before the Riders the game before that was the Newcastle Eagles who are top of the table I mean there really is a, a difference in the top two teams isn't it in their in their strength in depth. Yeah definitely I mean those two teams in particular have quite deep benches you know you could easily pick a start and five off of their bench so that really helps them especially down the stretch coming into the third and fourth quarters whereas other teams tend to have a seven eight man rotation they are quite deep so that, that definitely helps them in the long run. And you guys have had some real injury problems but it is giving the chance to some of the younger players I mean Jake Notice coming out from all the way through the ranks and through the academy it's great to see him getting some sort of first team play. Yeah definitely I mean you know, knowing that I came through the academy as well it's nice to see you know the next generation coming through and stuff so you know it's, it's difficult with injuries and we do want to have our team at full strength but we have to find some sort of way to you know gain a positive out of this and running our bench is definitely one of them making sure that we get the guys who maybe you know are still playing you know just as hard as everyone else in training but now they're getting an opportunity to show it in the games and you know our fans and people after the games are saying to us you know it's great to see them playing and stuff yeah. so it's, it's definitely a, a nice thing to see. When well, you talk about the next generation uh, lots of schools throughout Bristol and Somerset this week uh, half term weeks last week for Bristol and I know the Flyers as ever were putting on their half term camps and of course it doesn't just happen at half term there are these hub sessions as well that run at uh, half a dozen schools throughout Bristol I think uh, Bristol Free School St Bernadette's Bradley Stoke they are they are across the city yeah definitely and it's, it's Flyers players coaching them you know so the same people that the kids will see on the weekends playing against you know Newcastle and Leicester are the same guys that are you know in your local gym waiting to be coaching you well, talking about those guys playing, uh, there's no rest for the wicked. You've got a long trip up north this weekend. Yes, we do, yes. And uh, we are hoping to have our team back to full strength. Fingers crossed that, you know, uh, the physio can clear us for uh, a clean bill of health. It is such a big game. I know every game is a big game throughout any season, but as you go into the second half, Leeds Force are going to be a big one for you. They sit two points above the table and it's going to be a crucial win because it is, it's tied in the series between you guys. Yeah, the series is tied. So whoever takes this win gets a tiebreaker and you know tiebreakers are so important in our league. We play everyone three times. So you know we, we've lost out to teams like Surrey with the tiebreaker. So we really need to connect this one against Leeds, especially because they're old rivals. And then next home game at SGS Wise, who's that? When's that? It's a couple of weeks away now, isn't it? Uh, a couple of weeks away. I think we're playing Sheffield, I believe. So Sheffield's next home game. Off to Leeds tomorrow. And then in two weeks' time, we play Sheffield. Yeah, well, let's hope for another big sellout crowd. It is always oh, a yes. fantastic atmosphere. Best of luck uh, at Leeds. And uh, fingers crossed for the full complement to be returned. I look forward to reporting on a victory in Leeds next week. Fingers crossed. Thank <laughs> All right, very thanks very much, Greg. Well, talking of injuries, you may remember that we featured Bristol hockey star Lily Owsley a couple of weeks ago on the programme ahead of GB's tour down under. Well, it's bad news, I'm afraid, for Lily as sadly she fractured her collarbone in the opening test match against Australia. She's subsequently undergone surgery in Perth and she's going to return home with the squad next week. Fingers crossed to Lily for a speedy recovery. 
Well now to the latest look of the stadium redevelopment and the lower seating deck is all but complete along the front of the west stand now. Along the back of the lower tier in the middle of the stand the glazing has been going in for the corporate boxes each with sliding doors at the front. These really have as you would expect the very best views of the pitch along with the VIP club seats that are situated just below them in front. And on the reverse side of the stand, the cladding is now virtually complete along that southwest corner. Well, before we go, we started the programme with a Rugby World Cup winner and we'll end with a Rugby World Cup winner. As I'm pleased to say that tomorrow on Friday morning, we will be welcoming former England captain Lewis Moody to the stadium as our guest speaker as part of our Big Sports Breakfast lineup. If you're interested in attending any of these events, make sure you go to the website, check out all the details. You can see the full lineup for this calendar year. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the programme. Make sure you subscribe to Bristol Sport TV to make sure you never miss a minute. In the meantime, have a great weekend of Bristol Sport.